Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today we're going to talk about episode 3 of Chernobyl on HBO. This time it's a series of very, very subtle acting examples for lip sync or pantomime or reactions. It's more of the, the smaller things, the cool little details that you can put in without making your shot flashy in terms of big gestures. So if you're into quieter moments and more subtle looks and smiles, this is the one for you. Let's start with this discussion here. This is the sequence, I'm gonna scrub through. And that is all, and this is all about Small look, small gestures. He is asking him a bit of a favor. And what I like here is that this is all about lip sync where you do things before the actual lip sync starts. So before he tells his little joke here, you can see that little reaction. <laughs> look at that face. From here to here, so good. What a small thing that you can do before the line starts. It's almost like he is already laughing internally, I mean, and then externally at his own joke. So when you do have a lip sync, it doesn't have to be here when everything is happening in the audio. You can start something like that. And it's a subtle thing. And you can see in terms of doing subtle facial stuff, how the forehead goes up and because of that, it's that whole muscle that goes back. It pulls the, the hair back, little things here, just the, the cheeks, the fleshiness, all that good stuff that happens when you do this. But even this here, when he goes and actually says the line, he has a, t a little bit of a move backwards. If you look, if you scrub, you can see it. If you just watch it, it's there, but it's not massive. Same thing when he goes forward, he has that little anticipation there. I mean, he goes a bit forward with the body as well at the same time, but there's that bare moment through here, mostly with one eyebrow. Just that little lean forward, bit of a sideways tilt, and you know, a very clear stare there, not too many blinks. The same thing here, he's done with this little moment there, tiny bit of a smile. And then, as I mean, he kind of ends the conversation and he has one more thing to say. And again, before he does start the line, like, I need, I need her, like he's asking, uh, you know, for a partner. You can see that beginning that he realizes, okay, he's leaving now. So you start with the eyes. And it's a little bit of a, uh, and then the tension comes in here. And you see all of this. First, you got pressing of the lips, a bit of a tongue thing. And then he says, I need her. A very, very extreme jaw forward move. But if you look at this in terms of the body, this is all the handheld stuff that kind of adds some of it to it in terms of, you know, bigger movement. But if you look at his body, it's basically a little bit of a shift over there, weight shift, and then a head tilt over there. If you watch this again, need her just that still that little impatient look that may be a bit of a challenging thing but it's tiny right you go from here to here a little bit of a move in there and you anticipate the whole uh, the anger here with those little shapes so another example of you can start something facially and pantomime acting or whatever you want to do here before the audio line actually happens and if you've been watching my channel you know i'm a big fan of not just containing your animation too well lip sync starts here and lip sync starts there or ends there you want to add things before and after and even after he says this turns around and tells him well you'll be responsible for her and he has that little moment of he knows that uh oh well now it's on i mean it's, it's going to be my responsibility he's got that little swallow and then he says yes i mean he doesn't even say yes <laughs> he just nods but I like that as well. And you know, I've mentioned this a couple of times now on my channel that I'm a big fan. Little moments, very specific moments when you do add a swallow. And it's tricky because I don't know how many rigs actually have a, a swallow shape. So again, as he turns, challenges him, swallow, and then mm-hmm. And then here, it's done then. He all he all said it's done then. And the thing is, look at this, I mean he has a tiny shift. I mean it's a little bit in there, it's a human being with a little weight on there. But then it's just that tiny thing in Y. It's a slight wire rotation. There's not even anything in the eyebrows. It's so subtle. And again, you don't have to go big. It's a very, very confident, well, okay, that's it. He has so much power, he can make it all happen just by a little bit of a, all right, so be it. So it's very, very subtle, small things. I'm a big, big fan of head accents. Now, speaking of head accents, here's another sequence. 
As he goes around here, he's got head turns, blinks, he shuffles around, he's holding a cigarette here. So there's a lot of movement and he's, just, he's talking about the job, like what's going on here, what should we do? And then he asks how deep are we, are we digging this whole thing? And he hears 12 meters and then he goes, 12? Why? And he has that, I love that little wiggle there. Why? Just a little, it's a little challenging, like, really? Why? And it's, it makes no sense to him, 12, they're all gonna be exposed to radiation anyway. And you can see the difference here. So he starts moving around, he has that little move here. You can see the head looks, he's very nervous. He shuffles his arms around, you can see all the blinks. He's just really not comfortable lying to him. And then the contrast here, it's that inquisitive puppy tilt. He's interested, also challenging him. And you can see the lack of blinks. Because he realizes, wait, well, there's no difference between 12, we're here above 12, the entrance is at six. This is, you're just lying. So again, look at the contrast. So you have all that movement because he's caught now that he has to lie. He knows he has to lie. And he's really not comfortable with this. And here's just that stare, a little bit of movement in the head. Because again, even if there's not much to do, you have to realize that there is, you have your lungs, there's air, there's energy coming out so you can say the lines. It's not just going to be lip sync and that's it with nothing moving. Even then you can have subtle moves in the head and in the body. So look at that, continuous stare all this time. Look at that, it's a little bit of a move, a little bit of a wiggle again when he smiles because he realizes, oh, okay, well, you're lying to me. This is really, this is no good. Still no blinking. And as, as he realizes, hmm, you got caught. It's just that little look here. Also great. So, I mean, you can imagine you have maybe a line. You might want to start the shot with, um, where is he here? So as he says this, right? So this character, imagine you have this where maybe there's a wider shot with him is here, guy in the middle and the other guy is standing. So you, you, we know there are three characters. But the thing is, again, you can have lip sync where this character is talking and then you have this character talking, but you can still cut to your third character that you established at the beginning doing this. Because you have a pause. I'm a big fan of pauses between, between you know, when you have audio, when you have one or two characters. Anytime there's a pause, you can make your own thing. You're not bound to the lip sync anymore. So you could add just that look. It's a subtle look, but it, it adds to the thing of, well, he caught you. What are you going to say now? It's a great little moment. And it's again, not much going on again, a little bit in the body. You got to start look here, a little bit of a head move here. And as he goes up, his eyebrow goes up, almost giving us that little triangle, showing us up here. And then again, big fan, you got the swallow. He was caught, now he's nervous, even more nervous. Because no, no, it doesn't make any difference. And then now as he said that, look at that, it's that moment of, oh, I see. And it doesn't say it, it's just in the head turn up. Oh, okay, I get it. So then I tell him something else and then he says, no, I'm gonna do it my way. And once he does that, right, once he's done, it's that long stare again. Now he makes that choice, no. And now he breaks eye contact and moves around and shuffles around. For him, it's, it's a whole new chapter. Okay, I get it, you're all lying to me, we're all gonna potentially die, but I'm gonna do this and let's go. Come on, it's so good. Small but subtle and so good. I love stares. I love when, they're, when there's confrontation between characters and there's a long stare and the other character has to do something else, tries to evade the, the gaze and the, the challenging look. It's so good. And then going back again for a subtle look is that he tells them, hey, we're being followed. I mean, you can already point this out, that just that little look where he leads with the eyes and then does that, hey, look over there. But well, basically it's about him saying, hey, we're being followed. And I want to show you that we're being followed. And he tells them, hey, I've seen them before. And then look, look at this. Oh, it's so good. Again, it goes back to what I said before. Imagine, the, I mean, they talk beforehand, but this is the lip sync moment where I've seen them before. So imagine this is your assignment. Maybe you're showing, I don't know if that's your shot, but just pretend. Let's pretend the whole thing, right? Moves over, tells them to look over. Then we see the explanation of the look. Oh, okay, this is what it is. And here's your lip sync assignment. He says, I've seen them before. And then you could end. Or you could end here. But you can also continue with that smile. I'm just such a fan of adding something at the end, a little button at the end of the shot. So it's not just about the lip sync. 
because he tells him, hey, I've seen them before, and now he wants to know, well, what, what do you have to say about this? And he doesn't have to say much. It's just that all-knowing smile. It's like, yeah, I know. I've seen them before too, and I know what's going on. It's very subtle. And then the scene continues. So good. In this sequence, it's again about stares and looks. They're very frustrated about things here. And this is something where he tells them everything is okay, somewhat. And that's what he says here. Right? It's okay. I'm paraphrasing. But it's this... Look at that, that stare. I also like this when a character is not looking. He doesn't want to confront him. Maybe he's embarrassed, maybe he's just frustrated. And it's that angry look. And you could stage this where your second character is not doing much and it's blurred out. So you don't have to worry too much about facial details. It's just there for context, but it adds something to it. That stare wouldn't be the same if you would cut this off and you couldn't see the character. There's something too where you can stage it like this, but I love that little, just that moment of, ah, see, fine. And then that little, ah, uh, it's frustrated. And then he does try to look at him, like, mm, they're all so frustrated. But then he continues, well, actually, there's more bad news. And then as he reads this, as he continues, I love this look too here. Like, yeah, I know what's going on here too. And then he tells him, well, what's going on? Well, the meltdown has happened. So it tells him right here, yeah, the meltdown is happening. And again, it's the same thing as before. I'm showing you multiple examples. This is the line. The meltdown is happening, paraphrasing. And you could end it, you can end it here. But you can also continue just with that. And I love this, I love that. As he turns around, you will potentially have a bigger look or he looks away or a blink or something or a bigger follow with his eyes. But it's very subtle. A bit of a dart because he does follow the face a bit. But the fact that he lingers and actually doesn't move, there's really nothing in the face. And it's that long look of, ah, you were right and I hate it. We're all doomed. Now, I understand too that if you do something like this, right, in your demo reel, you want to show off things and you want to show that I can do body mechanics and pantomime and weight and all those things. And I say all that stuff about being subtle and having a person look away and all you're doing is a look, a bit of a tiny dart look down. It's a bit tricky to put that on your reel. I understand that because you want to show things off. You want to be loud and clear, I can animate. And maybe you're worried that something like this is too subtle. I kind of agree. I mean, it is tricky. Is it, it just depends where you send it. If, if the company's interested in performances, I think if you couch that in the middle, so you start big and you end big on your reel, you can put something like this in the middle and it shows off that, hey, I, I don't have to do big things. I don't have to move things and have characters jumping around and doing crazy gestures. I can do something where a character just looks and stares and it has a little bit of an eye follow. To me, it's a great contrast in your reel, but again, it shows variety that you have the confidence to not move your character. Because it's tricky, because you're tempted to move your character all the time, but you don't have to. It's also, it's also very difficult to not do anything and just have a dart or a little look. It, it takes a lot of control and you know you don't want it to you, you don't want your character to freeze or have that floaty feel. It's not easy to do. Just because there's nothing happening doesn't mean that it's easy to do. But it's something that I would recommend that at least you try it. It's a cool exercise. Again, it doesn't take long in terms of, you know, crazy IK switches or arcs and everything. It's from a technical point of view, potentially much easier and maybe less time consuming. But it's interesting for me at least to try it where I don't do much and just have that little look. How, how effective is it? Can I do that? And even if you don't put it on your reel, it, at least it's good practice for you to do something that's a bit more subtle and just a bit smaller in scale. Now this last one is not super subtle. To me, this is just more the variety of hand movements. So basically, she is giving her bribing money to see her husband at the hospital. And she said, no, I also like that little tiny framing in there. Now she takes the money, she doesn't look down, she just looks at the character. Uh, and yeah, yeah, all right. But I like this here at the beginning. You might, you know, if this is your assignment, you might just go, okay, I'm gonna grab this, put it down, and then that's it. And she, she insists, hey, the money's there. But, and you might argue sometimes, you know, less is more. Maybe you don't want it to be this complicated with all the finger detail here and how she holds this and does all that. But to me, at least it's worth looking at it and taking that as an inspiration that if I put the money down, it's a nice too with the compression here, that she doesn't just put it down. Maybe you want to add a slide like here, or you want to make it a bit more complex, adding a little bit of a tap there. 
swatches again. Just that. To me, it's just a nice complexity. And it's just, it's contrast too. It's, it's not just a simple A to B. It's just a little bit more in there. Now, again, it depends on your style. Is that something that's appropriate in your shop? It all depends on the clients, the direction, you know, if this is appropriate. But I like this too, that she waits. Well, she's not looking. She doesn't realize I put this there. A little bit of a look down like, wait, I, I have this here for you. And I love that. It's a little look. It's not aggressive. It's not a slap down here on the money. It's not something where she goes, hey, I, I gave you the money. She's still slightly polite in this, right? Just a little polite, little tap. And then she looks. So just that section here to me is really interesting where I would look at all the complexities. You know, you might have, this is the level of complexities, but you don't want to do all this. Maybe I just want to go halfway or just a little bit. Or in terms of actions, maybe I just like that she does this, that little move forward. Or maybe I do like that as well with a tap and then this. You can always pick and choose. You don't have to do the whole thing. But I think in terms of inspiration, in terms of, well, here is the, the full scale of complexity. Maybe I could put the whole thing in. But again, it depends on the style. It depends if it is appropriate for your shot. If you do a reference, you look at reference, you shoot reference, or you look at this reference, it doesn't mean that you have to put everything in. It really depends on the style. Sometimes you have all those little things and then it becomes busy. It almost becomes animation noise and it's too much. You don't... All the stuff you see in in real life, in your live action reference, doesn't mean that it translates well into animation. Because you want to make it clear. And sometimes making it clear means you got to simplify it. It doesn't mean that it's simple, but simple can mean clear. So it doesn't have to be overly complex because, oh, I, you know, I, I saw this and I want to put in all that detail. But yes and no. Again, it depends on the style. It depends if it's appropriate. And sometimes it makes it too confusing, too busy. Maybe the audience will look too much at the hand and it's all about the pleading stare of please take my money. So it just really depends on the context and the direction. Um, but at least, to me at least, it's something to think about and worth investigating in your shop. And boom, that's it. Episode three done. We have two more. And as always, if you watch this whole thing till the very end, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the minutes and dozens of minutes and maybe even hours you put into watching this channel. And I can see the subscriber count goes up. I really appreciate that you do hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't, you could, if you wanted to, if you get notifications for all my uploads, hit that bell button. YouTube is kind of funny about all the notifications. And if you feel like this is something that you want to apply to your shots, I do have workshops. You can sign up at any time. You can send me your shots. We can talk about things and I can give you all those ideas or you can implement this and then get feedback from me. My workshops are always open. The link in the description gives you all the email and information about the workshop. And that is it. So I will say thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next clip.